chopsticks now? You heard, yes. <laughs> I just said half my staff is sick, but I came back feeling great. And I got well, licked good. 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 All right. How are you? Good. Thank well, you, Secretary. Why don't you take this chair right here? That's the desk. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. They love you over there. Korea and China and Japan. Well, very high. That's nice to hear. Oh, yes. All very positive. They Where still did you go? What did you do in China? Well, China was interesting. I met with the labor minister. They were going through quite a um, exercise, as you know, at economic reform. Yes. And a large part of it is labor reform, including a number of things. Labor mobility, such as you can hire and fire. You can uh, advertise for a worker and maybe apply. And, and uh, even no, see. <laughs> the labor minister mentioned something you always mention. He said, I'd hope that someday that the size of our want ads will grow the way America's has. The other thing, and you'll get, I don't want to take too much time on this, but it was interesting. I just told uh, Ken, in China, they have a mandated six-month maternity leave for women to have children with pay. And sometimes it gets as long as a year. Well, as you know, we're fighting this parental leave bill on the Hill, which is quite onerous. And uh, they want to get out of it in China because they find it's a disincentive to employers hiring women. Because when they interview a woman, they immediately see, well, I'll have to give six months with pay, maybe a year with pay. And if I have to rely on that kind of a worker, why do that? Uh, so I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that they're, uh, that they're trying to do is uh, adjust to the fact that they're going to have unemployment. They don't call it unemployment. This is a good one for you. Youth who have just gotten out of school are called uh, waiting for employment. That's the category. They're waiting for employment. <laughs> but they're going to have unemployment because of labor mobility, so they're going to put in an unemployment insurance program, and we might be helping them with it. We signed a letter of uh, understanding on statistics is what I went for. So well, I'll give you more, but I don't want to take so away from, of that, from this, but it was fascinating. All of that was just beginning to start on our visit. That's right. I went to the same, one last point, I went to the same factory you went to, Foxborough. Saw your picture on the wall. You're in the brochures. It was sort of spooky. Because here you are in the middle of nowhere, you know, and you're looking at this factory and you have a Chinese manager. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good. Nice to see you as well. Good to see you. Thank you for letting me come by today. Well, pleased to have you. Come on in. Paul, how are you? Nice to see you. I sure do. Nice to see you. Good. Hello, B. Hello, Paul. How are you, sir? Fine. You scheduled let me come by and talk about a matter that is of a, a great concern, I know, to you and of great interest to me, and that is how do we more effectively respond to problems of drugs. Um, I'm very anxious to hear it because we've our national board on this and then the executive and legislative commission to which the Democrats have not appointed anyone as yet. Uh, I've asked for why don't we go ahead without it? I'm, I'm going to hear about your plan and what you... Thank you, sir. I Excuse appreciate that. Excuse me if I could interrupt. We're going to bring the video crew in now just to take a minute of footage here. Oh, all right. Additional video crew. Okay. I wonder if we'll have to small talk or. <laughs> well, shall we just uh, wait for a moment then and I think begin? We, yes. All right, so will you please give me my marching orders and I will follow <laughs> those, Mr. President. <laughs> well, I see this on television often when you're meeting distinguished guests. I didn't know that I would be in this chair. You're a distinguished guest. Well, thank you, yes, sir. You're saying all the right things. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> they usually bring nice gifts for them. <laughs> <laughs> the gift here is an idea. The Charles. gift is an idea. Good. The last one in here was a little gift of a, just a kind of a chipped piece of pottery.
Just the time. <laughs> Wonderful seeing you three times in one week. <laughs> Can you stand it? Yes, <laughs> more the better. Japanese prime minister at the time, and uh, that was a couple of prime ministers back. And he just sat there fascinated, watching while the cameras were all clicking away. Then I found out after they left, he was counting the Japanese cameras. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're good cameras. <laughs> <laughs> As I think most of you know, yesterday I vetoed the defense authorization bill. The stakes are high. Do we continue with the defense policy and a foreign policy that, that brought us the first real reductions in nuclear arms, a lessening in Soviet expansionism, and including a pullback from Afghanistan and a rising tide of democratic reform around the world? Or do we step back for the days of weakness, accommodation, and faltering prestige. This bill would have tied my hands in arms negotiations. It would have given the Soviet Union unilateral concessions that they couldn't win at the negotiating table. And this is folly and undermines the cause of peace and freedom. Second, the allocation of funds in the bill was unacceptable. It called for a nearly 20% reduction in the SDI funding. It also would have crippled development of our space-based interceptor, a crucial component of the SDI program. The American people, I think, want America defended from nuclear missiles, and we have no defense now. This bill abandons that vision of what could be or what we can have and what our people deserve. And I think these actions cannot be abided. The foreign policy successes that we've achieved, especially during the past few years, have been achieved because we did not give in to similar initiatives. I, at one time, for example, the nuclear freeze was urged on us by congressional critics. The truth is if we followed that advice and not deployed our Pershings in Europe, we wouldn't have had the INF Treaty. We didn't give in in the past, and we don't intend to give in now. We've been patient, we've been firm, and we intend to remain so. When this issue was put before the American people, I'm certain that not only of their support, but of their anger that such irresponsible steps could be contemplated. Steps that jeopardize the growth of peace and freedom around the world and all that we've achieved thus far. So let me end by thanking all of you for your support and I hope you'll all do everything you can to get the facts to the American people. And that's enough from me, Dr. Teller. <laughs> Mr. President, almost half a century. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Well, thank you. I you want to introduce the AIDS team, the, right. the A team we call them. This is Bob Comisher, Mr. President. Hello, Hello. How are you? Okay. Okay. And Lorraine Fishback. Yes. Hi, how are you? Mary Beth Hogan. Hello, David. And Steve Grossman, the left team. Pleased to meet you. How are you? And Steve King. Mm -hmm. Hello. That's all we have. That says it. Let <laughs> <laughs> me still see if our fruit of nature is with us. Yes, it is. You wouldn't expect that it was melting up here. Now it's gone. Out there by the road. You didn't expect to see snow this time of year, would you? It's not cocaine, is it? <laughs> this morning, I was bringing everybody in to see it because all along the sidewalk here, in that little gully on both sides, it was just like it is in the winter when the, the snow, you're waiting for the, or the snow to I guess it's some chemical they're putting in. <laughs> well, shall we group in here? Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I thank all of you.
you for the report that you provided here for action. And I guess we're going forward. There's only one thing I had to get some answers and clearance from the Justice Department, which I haven't uh -huh. given let their review whether we might be uh, attempting something that uh, we couldn't do legally. So. Well, thank you very much. Mr. Well, thank you. all of you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Yes. I have a joke just came oh. to me as a <laughs> It's one of my, one of the kind I like so much that are told in Russia. This joke has Gorbachev disguising himself and leaving Moscow and going to a little tiny village down in about a hundred miles away. He introduced himself to the mayor of the village and said, tell me, he said, uh, do your people here have television sets? How, how many? Oh, he said, every hut in the village has a television set. Well, they do, yes. And he said, and most of them have VCRs. <laughs> well, he said, that's remarkable. And he said, well, that's wonderful. He said, what about refrigerators? Do they have refrigerators? He said, almost every house has a refrigerator, some have two. And then Gorbachev says, wait a minute, you're pulling my leg. You know who I am. And the mayor says, of course I know who you are. You're a CIA agent. <laughs> who else would come to a decrepit little town like this that doesn't even have electricity and ask about our television? <laughs> Margaret Moore, Mr. President. Good Hello there. It's a pleasure. Nice Marty Amorosi. Hello there. Nancy Holmquist. Mr. President, Hello. it's a pleasure. Thank you. Linda Norberg. Hello, Mr. President. Joanne Dubetz. Hello, Mr. President. Hello there. Nice to meet you again. Jeff Hall. Hello, Mr. President. How are you? Uh, Judy Boggs. Hello there. Tony Blankley. Hello there. Dee Martin. Hello. Morgan Doughton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, hello again. Yes, hello again. Bob Kirshner. Hello there. Bob Hill. Peter Germanis. Richard Bevere. And Mike Driggs. Sir, can I get you over on this end here, please? Okay. You can come around. And if I could you move to your right just a bit, so I can see the gentleman behind you. I'm okay. fine. You really got the top spot? <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain that in a minute. Ma'am, if you can move a little to your right, please. Okay, fine. Great. Okay, right at me. Sitting serious, we can smile. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I said I'd explain. Back when I was first in Hollywood, you know, sometimes you have some kind of an affair and they want to move pictures of the stars and everything around. Frederick March was a very great star at that time. Everybody kind of shuffled toward the middle. Frederick March was always right over there. <laughs> and one day, you know, being new in the business, I said, why, wow, you're a great star and so forth. And he, well, they said, nobody reads the entire caption, but they all start reading from left to right. Well, listen, thank you all for what you've done. It's, it's a great job. And most grateful, and for what you're doing. It's an honor to serve you, Mr. President. It's an honor to serve you. Well, I'm very grateful. Yeah.